Good morning. This is the Great Basin Seasonal Outlook from September through December 2024. Look at our end of August fire activity. You can see our large incidents, a ton of them across parts of uh, the central Idaho mountains, also in uh, parts of western Wyoming, and uh, continued uh, large fires across many parts of the Great Basin. Unusual uh, fire activity for this late in the season. You can see the last 14 days of August quite wet across Utah, the Arizona Strip, and some eastern areas, but quite dry. These light blue shades are just a, maybe a, a couple of hundredths of an inch to a tenth of an inch of rain across western areas. Uh, that plays a big role in our determinations. Uh, looking at temperature and precip the past 30 days, uh, the areas here, most of the Great Basin in the yellow and orange, somewhat above normal, uh, two to four degrees above normal in some areas. On the right-hand side, you see how much drier than normal we are across Nevada and especially across uh, a good portion of uh, western and central Idaho. It gets a little bit more moist the further east you go, but still a dry pocket here in western Wyoming as well, and a lot of moisture has made its way into the eastern portion of the Great Basin over the month of August. Um, we did have a lot of early and midsummer heat that set the stage for our very active fire season. You see the June temperatures on the left, July temperatures on the right, and both months had temperatures about two to four or four to six degrees above normal. Big, big uh, role in why we dried out so much. Uh, precipitation since October of last year, winter precipitation, fairly dry to near normal only across much of uh, Idaho and into, uh, but wetter than normal across northern uh, Nevada that and so southwest Idaho. And that set the stage uh, for a lot of fine fuel loading as well as carryover fuels from the previous year. We saw that also in parts of uh, northwest Utah and southeast Idaho. So these wetter areas uh, where we see here is what led to a better grass crop in our lower elevations, uh, while the drier weather and less snowpack up north played a role in uh, what's going on in the high elevations of Idaho right now. Uh, precipitation since April 2024, uh, pretty dry across a lot of areas. A lot of that uh, fine fuel had a good chance to cure out. Uh, also, the drought monitor. We see um, up here in our central Idaho mountains, we did have drought reappear. This brownish shade is moderate drought. Uh, the extreme drought knocking on our doorstep just on the other side of the border in parts of southwest Montana. So things have dried out considerably through there, and we expect that pattern to continue for the next couple of months. Also, the flash drought indices for the last two weeks of August shows a very rapid drying across much of Nevada and northwest um, uh, Utah and going up to parts of uh, southern Idaho. That also playing a role for us in terms of our fuels and how much they grow and, and, and how cured out they are. Uh, from our fine fuel loading, we see a lot of fuel loading um, in parts of the Snake River Plain and in parts of northern um, Nevada, so that also plays a role as well as northwest Utah. Less fine fuel as you head further south. Uh, our 10-hour fuel moistures, uh, end of August, again, these will vary day to day, but uh, getting into the uh, mid-single digits, we see these areas in pink. The 100-hour fuels, uh, in the 6 to 10 percent range, just about across the entire geographic area except the far southeast. So basically, all areas in the mid to upper single digits on the 100-hour fuels can readily burn on a dry, windy day. And we see our 1,000-hour fuels also in the single digits across many areas in the south, central, and even parts of Idaho. And even this regular yellow, uh, closer to the low teens, also fairly significant. Our ERC point map, uh, end of August, you can see a lot of our areas in Idaho where current large fire activity in the 90th percentile, even uh, parts drier in parts of the Sierra front. Um, it's only one piece of the puzzle, but just something we also look at and how much more moist we are across our southeastern sections. So looking at all that stuff, what happens from here? Well, our 8 to 14 day temperature outlook shows a continuation of much above normal temperature uh, probabilities across the entire Great Basin as we go into the second week of September, along with drier conditions. Our uh, four month outlook for September, much above normal temperatures for the entire Great Basin, also drier than normal conditions. Um, we see those above normal temperatures continue into the fall, but we start seeing more and more precipitation work its way into uh, the Great Basin. Of course, uh, this the shorter days tend to put an end to the burn season by, by then. So we put all the pieces together, and this is what we're looking at for September, above normal 
large fire potential everywhere you see the red here northern nevada northwest uh, um, utah and all of idaho and western wyoming seeing uh, fire conditions above normal for september levels and then of course as we go into october and december uh, through there we go back into off-season conditions a uh, quick look at the national map with us and all the other geographic areas you can see us in september matching up with what's going on in montana and in northern california and then we get more benign as we go through the autumn months this concludes our seasonal outlook issued on the first of every month have a great day